Hello, friends, and welcome to another edition of Trenton Talks. Today's topic, I'm your host, Jacques Howard. Let me back up. That's Trenton Talks in the Public Interest, and I'm your host, Jacques Howard. You're listening to us over WIMG 1300, streaming over the website, WIMG1300.com. Facebook and Twitter as well, WIMG 1300. And if you're watching over television, it's via Channel 25, WPHY Channel 25, Mercer County, New Jersey. Every Monday night on WIMG, you can find me and my program, the Trenton 365 Show, from 8 to 9 p.m. So, in the studio with me is Tom Montanari, who's an educator, and we're going to be talking tonight about an event that's coming up this coming Thursday. Tom, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Excellent. Tom, a uh, quick bio about who you are, and then let's get right into your role at Trenton High School West, Okay. and then we can talk about what's coming up this Thursday. Okay. Quick history. Ten years as a public educator here in the city of Trenton. I started out at main campus, I'm a visual art instructor. And uh, this is now my fifth year over at Trenton High West, which is the old Junior 3 on West State Street. And, you know, 10 years into this, what you would call a career transition for me, I worked as a professional artist, uh, specifically freelance illustrator for over 25 years. So that being said, now I'm in this, (coughs) excuse me, stage of my life where I get to take my professional experience and pass it on, Mm. Uh, you know, after doing it for a good period of time. So now here we are, Trenton High West. Uh, Five years ago, we had a little event that was quite informal. It was just a kind of a reunion breakfast in my classroom with two of my former students. I started out at main campus in 2005. And now five years later, we've got an event that's grown substantially. Five years ago, we just sat there with three groups of classes very informally, and both of those students uh, are now in the professional world. One is a graduate of Wake Forest University. Her name's Benches Chusu. She's Liberian, and she actually runs a program here in the city called Both Hands, which is on the second floor of the Bonner Center, which is the TCNJ affiliate, uh, the community service outreach program downtown, also on Broad Street. And then another student, Tennessee Buckman, who is a professional makeup artist. He works at the Mac counter. He's worked in New York. He's done work for French Vogue, Italian Vogue, Fashion Week in New York City. So in my, in, in my best description of both of these young people, uh, great young individuals, role models for our, our kids today that are they're rock stars. You know, they're out there in the real world doing it. And, and they, they speak from a voice of experience. So the second year, we did it again. They came back. We did it in the auditorium, and then we did it a third time in the auditorium. And then the event grew so substantially that we we knew that we needed to actually do something a little bit different, and we needed more space. So it became an alumni breakfast. So last, last year, being 2013, we moved it to the cafeteria. We got some sponsorship. We had bagels, coffee, muffins, juice, that sort of thing. And, you know, four years into it at, at West Campus, you, you've got a good crop of kids that you've worked with, you've watched them grow and, and move on to college, in some cases professional professional lives, and they came back. We, we did it all very efficiently via email and, and that sort of thing. They represented, they dressed for success, and so really what the nuts and bolts of this event has become is it's a, it's a community service event where the alumni come back and it's their opportunity to give back to our graduating class of seniors because that's specifically who we're targeting with the event because the alumni have the the after high school experience and they're there to to give them realities and advice and what was difficult for me after I graduated what I would do differently what to avoid things of that nature and it's a it's a very give and take type of an event the alumni come in first they have a bite to eat and you have a chance to kind of catch up because they're just coming off the back side of finals so they're like <sighs> can exhale a little bit and then we call the seniors down and a lot of them don't even know it so we don't really advertise it too much during the week with the uh, the seniors themselves so it's a bit of a surprise mm-hmm. it's a nice segue going into the holiday season we do it on a thursday because we have more kids in the building on a thursday than we do on a friday especially going into a, a long christmas break and just can't say enough. I mean, it's just great because 
we've got, um, we'll, we can talk about a little bit more, a great crop of, of alumni that come back, and I, you know, I can give you a sampling a little bit later on of some of the schools that they're currently attending and have, have graduated from. So that's that's the, the long and the short of it. Mm-hmm. Well, Tom, I want you to, ch- to talk about um, the reason for coming up with this idea. Um, you know, it's always good to have peer-on-peer um, conversations and a dialogue. What was the reason behind setting this uh, alumni day up? I think from my perspective, it goes back to when I was when I was in college and a bit in high school too, because I think every every high school student at some point hopefully finds that one teacher who is more than just a teacher to them, a, a, a life coach, an advisor, a mentor, who they really connect with. And, I, and our young people today, we all need them, even despite, you know, uh, where, where they are, what the, the early stages of their lives. So I think 20s, 30s, 40s, we always have someone who's a little bit older and wiser than we are that can pass on that sage knowledge. <laughs> and then when I went to art school, it was more of the same, and even more so because a lot of my professors there were working professionally in addition to having their teaching practice. And what I really appreciated about that is the fact that they were able to pass on, quote unquote, that real life knowledge and experience and, and instead of just you know you can't get that in a textbook and you can't get that in a classroom but what you can get that is in one-on-one interaction with somebody who says listen this is what it's like out there in the real world mm-hmm. and that's that always impressed me and you know I think when I transitioned from the professional world from industry to public education I think it was a natural transition because I, I essentially am a people person when I work professionally I had to interact with people all the time in order just to get the work so if you couldn't articulate and, and actually you know have that one-on-one that as we call the people skills mm-hmm. it, it was it would set you back you were at a disadvantage mm-hmm. and that's another thing that's really important about what we've got going on with our young people today is that they need to that's that's the you know the one of the most important skills they need to really acquire and work on is interacting with other people. Mm -hmm. How they present themselves, their tonality, their body language, their eye contact, how they work with their hands, their posture, things like that. Because a lot of them aspire to be in positions where they're going to have to be working with people on a day-to-day basis. Mm -hmm. And that's that's a a really important skill. And once again, you don't get that in textbooks, you don't get that in videos. You get that one-on-one interaction. Mm -hmm. That's pretty awesome to to hear you say that because um, that's something that I found in my transitions. Um, career-wise from, you know, college to working in the garment industry and then also in finance and, and an entrepreneur, those skills are the transferable skills, the skills of, of how you conduct yourself, um, making, uh, um, I don't want to say educated, but making very specific um, uh, decisions that are going to be able to impact your future in a positive way. It's, it's, it's a skill, again, that I think needs to be taught more in school. Mm-hmm. It's also something that, that probably should be taught more at home and through peer-to-peer contact and family, et cetera. But that's for another program. So I'm speaking with Tom Montanari, who's an educator, and he's at Trenton High School West, uh, formerly known as Junior 3. And uh, he's uh, sharing about an alumni event that's coming up this Thursday. And, Tom, share some of the details about the event, please. Sure. Well, this year we're really happy to have a new sponsor, Hopewell Valley Community Bank. And they've, they've come on board, so they're going to supply us with the carbs and the caffeine, as we call it, C&C. <laughs> Lots of bagels. And, you know, a lot of our alumni now understand the values of coffee <laughs> early in the morning. And they're coming off of their, their finals and that sort of thing, so I'm sure they'll appreciate that. And, you know, I can't say enough for this type of a partnership. Last year we had a, a different sponsor, Princeton Blairstown, which is one of our strategic partners in the building. But, you know, uh, things change. So we're really happy about that. The event is two hours long. The alumni come in at about 8.30 because our school day starts at 8 o'clock. They, they walk in the building like they used to at any other time, only th- this time it's a little bit more structured because there is a sign-in sheet and there's a list of all the attendees. So, And the thing that's great about this, too, is we're using Facebook as the conduit to get the word out there. So we have a Trenton High West alumni Facebook page. So, you know, here we go. Technology and the social media portals are just making it so much easier to do it this year. 
and that's where the, the alumni respond if they are going to attend or not. All the information is posted that we put a document up there that let them know all the details of the event and what it's really all about, which is just reinforcing what we did last year. Essentially what they're really doing is they're paying it forward. And, and that's why we need them there to talk with our seniors. Seniors get called down and then they get to break bread with the alumni. There's still a lot of strong connections because they're just essentially in some cases just a year apart from one another. But I think one of the most powerful aspects of an event like this is the fact that when they're getting this type of social interaction and advice, they're getting it not from an adult or from a teacher, which can be perceived as you're just an authority figure. Mm -hmm. It's coming essentially from their peer group. And that being said, it just makes it so much easier for them to really listen to one another. And that's the other aspect of this, too. It's not just about the talking. It's the listening component. And that's another skill that they need to work on as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. That's great. <clears throat> I'm Jacques Howard, your host, and you're listening to today's topic, excuse me, Trenton Talks in the Public Interest. I'm going to get that the 30 minute switch over correct. I'm speaking with Tom Montanari, who's an educator at Trenton High School West. And we're speaking about an alumni event that's going to take place this Thursday morning from 8.30 to 10.30, which is an alumni event where it's peer-to-peer -peer contact, communications, networks, et cetera. So stay tuned and make sure you go over to our website, wimg1300.com, and take a look at all the wonderful things that are there. We'll see you after a short break. Are you in financial trouble with your home mortgage? Are you behind on your mortgage payments and you've tried everything to work out a solution with your bank, but they simply won't do anything to make your mortgage more affordable? We all know housing values have plummeted over the years. Many good people like you are now in mortgages they can't afford. If your bank has turned you down and refuses to work with you on any type of modification program, we can help. We are Foreclosure Relief of America. We may help you by taking the lender head on. We will aggressively seek on your behalf positive equity in your home, a lower fixed interest rate, a mortgage payment that you can afford, and a waiver of delinquent payments, penalties, and interest. Call today for a no-obligation analysis. 877-801-3823. 877-801-3823. Or visit foreclosurereliefofamerica.com. Welcome back, folks. Um, I'm Jacques Howard, your host, and you're listening to Trenton Talks in the Public Interest. I'm your host, and uh, you can also find me on Monday nights here on WIMG from 8 to 9 p.m. for the Trenton 365 show, where we talk about profiling positive things that are taking place in the Delaware Valley region. But right now in the studio, I've got Tom Montanari, who is an educator, um, artist as well, and uh, we're talking about Trenton Central High West, uh, or excuse me, Trenton High School West. And Trenton High School West is having an alumni event geared towards peer-to-peer -to -peer contact where some of the previous alumni one or two years out of college or, or folks who are into the working world are coming back on Thursday between 8 and 10 a.m. to talk to the students and uh, have a little networking session and some peer-to-peer -peer conversation. Tom, I want you to just uh, rally back around mm -hmm. and, and uh, give a shout out to the, one of the sponsors that you have for the event because we believe that that's key to having things function properly. Yes, absolutely. Hopewell Valley Community Bank and, and in, uh, specifically Carrie Barrio, who is the Vice President of Marketing there. Uh, I've known Carrie for a number of years now. And historically, they've, they've stepped up and helped us in the past. In 2011, we had a art show at Artworks, which we all know about, right downtown mm -hmm. on Stockton Street. Hopewell Valley Bank, Community Bank, stepped up to the plate and was one of the associate sponsors for that event as well. So, you know, anything that supports the school, the district, the arts uh, is, is really just, it's an amazing thing. And it's, it shows that they believe in what we're doing and a, a great confirmation, uh, reaffirmation for me that, you know, what I'm doing, what we're doing is, is, is good work. So uh, just really couldn't be more, more pleased that they stepped up to help us out this year. I know the kids are going to appreciate it too, and uh, we've, we've got some great programs. You know, one of the other things that I wanted to mention is that 
you know, the, our seniors, when they come into senior year, in addition to the anxieties of doing their college applications, they have a lot of expenses because a couple things coming up. And I mean, we're almost into January now, and they're already talking about prom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and all these things cost them a lot of money. So they've got prom to think about. They've got college expenses, books, all those types of things. And you know, a lot of our kids, in addition to, to being in school on a full-time basis, they're also working jobs, too. And sure. they're doing it either to support themselves or quite possibly to help support their families. So it's a little different reality for our demographic than, let's say, you know, other communities surrounding you know, Trenton. So we have fundraisers to support our seniors. You know, we just had one last Saturday, as a matter of fact. And you know, we, we could probably do a better job of getting the word out there for these things. But uh, one of the things we do have is we have a, a main number at the high school. There is the, the district website for the Trenton Public Schools. And then we also have the Trenton High West, as we call it, alumni Facebook page. And I could also put my email out there, too, at school if someone wanted to contact me directly to find out more about some of the events that we, we have at school. Mm -hmm. Well, folks, so we're going to have all this information up on the Trenton 365 Show Facebook page. But, Tom, why don't you give your email address um, for the folks who may be interested in taking it down right now? Sure. The, the easiest e uh, email address would be just T Montanari, M-O-N-T-A-N-A-R-I, at AIM.com. And what was the dot com again? AIM. A as in Apple, I as in Internet, M as in Mary. Gotcha. So that's a T Montanari at AIM.com. And there you can get connected with Tom, folks, and then you can kind of stay in the loop with some of the things that are taking place at Trenton High School West, including the alumni event that is going to be taking place this coming Thursday morning from 8 to approximately 11, we'll say. Um, 8 to 11, uh, Hopewell Valley Community Bank is one of the, the associate sponsors of the event. And during this time, um, alumni graduates from Trenton High School West will come back and have conversations and share some of the details that they've learned um, from their time outside of high school. And uh, Tom, you, you mentioned uh, Bentress Jessu, who, again, who I met, who's a very, very sharp woman um, who's got some great things going on for her, decided to come back to the area where she's from to give back um, from her education, her commitment to life in general, and just to come back. Why don't you do a little shout out to uh, Bentress? Yeah, Benny, this this is for you, kid. So I had Benny for three years at, at Maine campus where I started, and she went on to four years at Wake Forest. She majored in studio art and entrepreneurship. And I can't say enough about her because not only is she amazingly talented artistically, and uh, she she can do it all. She's really the complete package. But the fact that she, after, you know, after graduating from Wake Forest, which I think is going on two, maybe three years now, I've lost track of time, she, she decided to come back to the city. And that, that's, that's a real testament to the belief in, you know, the, in the power of human connection. And from her perspective, using her words, is she said that how art changed her life and you know, really kept her straight when she was going through some tough times when she was in high school. And that being said, you know, she ran the after-school program down at the Boys and Girls Club on mm -hmm. Center Street for about two or three years. I worked with the summer 2012. So glad we were able to do this. It was a six-week program at Maine campus. We got permission from the principal at that time and board approval. And it was her summer arts resource program, which had multiple strands. So in other words, it wasn't just art making. There was videography. There was black and white photography. There was dance. There was spoken word. There was music. It was knitting you know, and hand skills and things of that nature. And these kids really had a, a great opportunity to like dig in and, and focus on their inner creativity and find their voices. And in doing something really positive for themselves and that, those day-to-day -day interactions. And it was, it was great because, you know, that building's going to be gone coming uh, this spring. And, you know, you know, when we look back on it, we have some sweet memories of some of the things that we did there. So now Benny runs the program at the Bonner Center up on the third floor, mm -hmm. which is called Both Hands, the Art Lit. This is her genus. She conceived of this probably three, four years ago while she was in school at Wake Forest. And uh, she's got her own business model, business plan, logo. She's the complete package. Mm -hmm. And it's just great to have a former student. I mean, that's what's so rewarding as an educator, to have a former student who comes back 
and, and gives back in this way and is so involved with the local community. Because, I mean, it's kind of like the, the, the talent or the brain drain from any community, whether it's Trenton or, you know, in, in Pensy somewhere in New York or suburb of the city. Because I grew up 50 miles uh, just north of New York in the southwestern corner of Connecticut. Like, it's not unusual for students after they graduate from college. They don't, re they don't return back to their hometowns. They move on to greener pastures, and you can't blame them for that. But it's, it's that much more important to have someone like Ben you know, Ventress or other students who decide to stay the course, and even after graduating, they, they come back to the city because they believe in it. And you know everything that's going on in the arts community, can't say enough. I mean, it feels like the city is, is on the cusp of some really great things. And these young people are a part of that. They're involved in the events. They come out. I bring my own children because I'm a father myself. You know, my daughter's 14. My son's 11. They come down to the Gandhi Garden. They go to openings at Artworks. Uh, we go to the African American Pride Festival, a cultural festival in Cadwalder Park. And, you know, it's, it's really... It's just about community. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm glad you said that. Um, when I first met Ben Trist, um, probably right when she finished school or just before she graduated, uh, I met her at uh, the Bethany House of Hospitality um, when I was uh, managing that facility. And uh, she had come over, and uh, she was looking for some space for her nonprofit that she was starting. Mm -hmm. And one of the first conversations that we had, um, she spoke about how much she wanted to come back to her hometown. Mm -hmm and to give everything that she had to make it easier for someone else. Not necessarily easier, but to share that experience and that knowledge with others so that it would help them get prepared. Because I remember her talking about how there, when, when she went to college, how there were some adjustments that she had to make. And a lot of times those adjustments in other communities it's kind of taken care of as you get into the junior year and senior mm -hmm. year. You have these college preparatory classes. And uh, unfortunately, um, th that's just not how it happens for everyone. And uh, she wanted to come back and share her experiences so that she could help prepare some of the other people. And it's great to hear that she's connected with you, um, that you and I are connected, mm -hmm. and that what she's doing is making a difference um, currently, today, um, in a, in Trenton High School West and going forward. So that's actually uh, that's actually pretty exciting. And I've got to get Ventress on the show. Definitely. Um, you know, Definitely. We, we've been missing each other quite a bit. We see each other at uh, most of the, of the functions that take place in the city. So uh, we'll make sure that we get her on the show. But, you know, it's also um, another interesting fact is you talking about the art. Mm -hmm. And about I know that you're an artist mm -hmm. and you're an educator. Mm -hmm. But... Share a little bit more, because, I mean, people, I'm sure, hear me all the time mm -hmm. bigging up the arts community and what's happening mm -hmm. uh, with the subculture here in Trenton with art. I want to hear you talk about the art a little bit so that the people can get it from a different perspective. Well, you know, I, I actually, before I even got my teaching gig here in Trenton, I taught adult classes and, and teenagers at Artworks. And so we're talking over 10 years ago. So I've seen some things, some change changes and change over the years here in the, in the city and you know being a professional artist is different than being an art educator and you know one of the things that I identify with this city is like a lot of other post-industrial cities that have fallen on kind of some tough times and but the the infrastructure is there the the community is there essentially but what we have to do is just tap into all the resources you know, at play here. And I think one of the reasons why the city feels like it's, it's starting to come through this, this dark era that we kind of encountered here, uh, a lot of that is attributable to the arts. So between TDA, between artworks, between people like you, uh, the Sage Collective, the Trenton you know, Downtown Beautification Society, the, the disc jockeys, just the mod, and and uh, and you know, John and, and all those folks, and then Will Kins with the, uh, you know the, the the Trenton rides that we do from Trenton Social and things like that. There's this kind of cross pollination that's been taking place over the last couple of years, and it, we've all kind of gotten to know each other and what our strengths are, and how we can kind of. Like when we're in a conversation with somebody, it's like, you know, I need to connect you to this person. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of it because not only is it fun to cross-pollinate and meet, each, you know, meet people that way, but we do it in fun circumstances <laughs> over food and drink and things like that. And, you know, 
in my opinion, that's what brings a city that's come through some dark times back up to a, what we would call a, a renaissance or a new beginning because arts is really culture, but culture is really more all-encompassing. So it, it's not just art, it's music, it's dance, it's theater, it's spoken word, it's performance, mm -hmm. it's, it's street art, it's definitely food. In all those things. And one of the other things I want to, I, I definitely want to mention before we sign off here today is I want to give a shout out to my administrators at my building, Miss Lane, Mr. Cadonier, and Mr. Parker, because you know what? I don't have, it makes my job easy. I don't have a lot to do to get things like this approved because it's an established program. I just send them the information and they sign off and they say, you run with it, you go with it. So there's no micromanagement. They just kind of let me do it because and, you know, with the help of others as well. So it's not really about me. It's about, you know, we've got worker bees that make this whole thing happen. And, you know, I want to thank them for just allowing me to be able to, to do these types of things. Excellent. And I'm looking forward to meeting them and all the other contacts at Trenton High School West on Thursday for the uh, Trenton Central or Trenton High School West alumni event. Tom Montanari, thank you for your time on uh, WIMG 1300 and Channel 25 WPHY, Mercer County. Thank I'm you. Jacques Howard, your host. You'll be listening to Trenton Talks in the Public Interest. We'll see you after a short break. In the Public Interest on Trenton Talks is a program that explores different topics that are of interest to you. In the Public Interest on Trenton Talks can be heard every Tuesday night on 1300 WIMG at 6 p.m. and 6.30 p.m. and seen on WPHY 25. This is a service of WPHY Channel 25 and the Morris Broadcasting Company. serves no purpose. 1300 WIMG, Ewing, Trenton.